So fair warning, guys, and I'm not joking. Massive spoiler alert on the potential design of Tesla's dedicated robo-taxi. In this video, we'll be speculating with the help of Grok as to why it may look and function the way that it does. If you don't want me to be a party pooper, maybe hold off until the event less than a month away. Otherwise, are you ready? On screen right now, what appears allegedly to be a leaked image of a heavily disguised dedicated Tesla Robotaxi on the Warner Brothers studio lots where their Robotaxi event will be held in less than one month. Of course, this is all allegedly. And I have taken the liberty of attempting to further disguise and mask the potential design of the vehicle because I don't want to be too much of a party pooper. I don't actually really care about what this thing looks like. Instead, I'm much more interested in why it will be designed certain ways. The core design principles behind the Robotaxi, not aesthetics. If ever there were a vehicle in which the only design priority, other than of course safety, was function, it would be a dedicated Robotaxi. Form, not even in the picture. Why? Consumers aren't buying this. It's a commercial service. They're going to use a Robotaxi to get from point A to point B. Not to signal to everybody how successful they are, how they're insecure about their tiny dick, or how unique and special they are. So forget everything you think about how and why a vehicle would be designed a certain way. We are going to see a physical manifestation of pure function over form. Yeah, I notice a few interesting things. One, people might ask, why is there a gigantic box on the back? Is it a pickup truck? Uh, spoiler alert. If you want to disguise the shape of a vehicle heavily, sticking a box on the back is a great fucking way to do it. It's basically a certainty if this turns out to be true that this would be a two-door vehicle. Oh, I'm so shocked. And likely a two-seat vehicle. Oh, I'm so shocked. Wait, no, I'm not, because that's what I predicted. If Tesla is going to produce a dedicated robotaxi, if they were only to produce a single vehicle, a two-seater, two-door two-seater would make all of the sense in the world. Why? Because almost every trip in a taxi, in an Uber, has no more than two passengers. Usually it's one, occasionally two. And yes, there are some families, I get that. But Tesla, as a business, operates with big brains. And instead of trying to cater to tiny, narrow little slivers of the market, instead they think, what will suit the needs of the 80, the 90 plus percent of people? I also suspect in the long term, or maybe even at this event, we may see a much higher density vehicle, e.g. a van that could seat 6, 8, 10, 12, 16 people. In addition, that will completely cover everything and also massively disrupt public transportation like buses and trains and so on. But what we're seeing here, if true, if legitimate, seems extremely likely to be a two-door, probably two-seater dedicated robotaxi, which makes all the sense in the world. Interestingly, however, Rear wheel, significantly bigger than the front. Why? I decided to prompt Grok. Now, assuming this design is legit, I basically asked, I mean, you can read what I asked, why the fuck would the larger reels at the back make sense? What's the point? Why would you do that? Grok's answer. One, weight, distribution, and traction. Typically, in vehicles with larger rear wheels, there's an implication of rear wheel drive. Interesting. Is that possible? Rear wheel drive? Spoiler alert. Extremely likely. I mean, it's, there's no chance they're going to have an all-wheel drive robot taxi and front-wheel drive wouldn't make any sense. So, I mean, tick, okay, that's probably one reason. And then it also, Grok provides an alternative or at least a significant portion of the vehicle's weight being over the rear wheels. This is probably not necessarily accurate. I mean, it could be. Maybe there's a lot of storage in the back for fuckloads of suitcases and stuff. Who knows? But obviously, rear-wheel drive, tick. This setup could enhance traction. Check this out. Especially useful in a vehicle designed for urban environments where quick acceleration from stops is common. Stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. Enhanced traction could lead to better efficiency by reducing wheel slip and improving overall grip, which might be particularly beneficial for a robotaxi that needs to operate smoothly in various conditions. But wait, there's more. Two, aerodynamic efficiency. While larger rear wheels might seem counterintuitive for aerodynamics, if designed correctly, they could help in reducing drag. The size difference might be part of an overall aerodynamic profile where air flows more smoothly over the vehicle reducing energy loss due to air resistance now i'll translate less drag means the vehicle will go further on a single charge meaning it has a lower cost to operate meaning tesla can offer this service at a lower cost to consumers this vehicle by the way folks will be all about efficiency number one how quickly can we produce it how cheaply can we produce it and how many of these can we produce per square foot of factory space? In terms of production, that's going to be the focus. Fast, cheap, and dense production. And then when it comes to operation, how cheaply can we operate this thing? All costs considered. You want an electric motor that lasts basically forever. You even want tires that last basically forever. The less times you need to maintain and change and upgrade and tinker and touch the vehicle, the better. You want the battery last basically forever. 
electric motor basically forever even the wiper fluid and shit like that although that's not going to be a major issue for passengers inside but anything at all in fact there probably ain't going to be wipers come to think of it why would there be hmm good point okay yeah forget that no wipers so anything you can do to lower the cost to operate these things at scale over time per mile is going to matter let's continue this aspect would directly contribute to energy efficiency crucial for electric vehicles like tesla's robotaxi Three, design for functionality over traditional aesthetics. Robotaxis might prioritize functionality, they will, over traditional car design aesthetics, they will. Larger rear wheels could be part of a design philosophy where space, weight, and efficiency are optimized. For instance, if the vehicle uses the rear wheels for additional functions, like enhanced steering, oh shit, I didn't think about that. Remember the Cybertruck out, mmm, fuck dude. Or if there's a specific mechanism for energy recovery or distribution, larger wheels might be necessary. Four, cost and manufacturing efficiency. Interesting here. Using different size wheels could also be about cost efficiency in manufacturing. If the rear wheels serve a dual purpose or require different technology, like for regenerative braking or advanced suspension, having them larger might simplify the design or reduce costs elsewhere in the vehicle's construction. Hmm. Five, passenger comfort and space utilization. With a focus on being a robo taxi, the design might aim to maximize interior space or passenger comfort. Larger rear wheels could allow for a specific suspension setup or interior layout that provides a smoother ride or more legroom, indirectly contributing to efficiency by reducing the need for frequent maintenance due to wear and tear from passenger usage. Six, innovative wheel technology. There might be an innovative technology or mechanism integrated into the larger rear wheels, like advanced energy recovery systems. Bro, Grok is so good at this shit. Now, this is obviously pure speculation and maybe some of this might be inaccurate, but isn't this a fun exercise to speculate? By the way, just to be clear, my prompt, it seemed quite obvious to me that larger rear wheels would have something to do with overall efficiency. I literally said, does this have something to do with efficiency in the prompt? But I didn't exactly know why. Grok's coming up with some interesting answers. Or even something related to how the vehicle interacts with the road surface for better efficiency or autonomous driving capabilities. And seven, visual and branding strategy. Tesla might also be playing into the visual impact and branding. Unique designs can attract attention and discussion. True, I mean, shout out to the Cybertruck which in the tech and automotive world translates to free marketing. If these wheels contribute to a narrative of innovation or efficiency, it serves Tesla's brand. Well, yeah, well, probably not a high priority, but you never know. So let's see the summary. Given these points, while efficiency is likely a significant factor, the larger rear wheels could be a multifaceted design choice balancing functionality, innovation, cost, and marketing. Not so sure about the marketing, but hey, whatever. Tesla's approach often involves pushing boundaries. Yeah, cool story, bro. So, okay, interesting. So let's think about this a little bit, given what we've heard from Grok, and by the way, the trolling in terms of the cyber cap design. Clearly, this is a two-seater, two-passenger, maybe three, but two-passenger vehicle, right? That wheel is gigantic. You can't put passengers there that have no legroom. This is clearly an intentional design choice, an engineering choice. Exactly how small are these front wheels? It's hard to tell. But it appears quite evident that the cabin has been optimized for space and the design of the vehicle for efficiency. Even though we can't tell exactly what it looks like, the significantly larger rear wheels my hunch that it has something to do with efficiency and then Grok's potential explanations, things are looking very interesting. Now, my final question is this. Given the purpose of a robo-taxi is to move people from point A to point B, what would the best use of the rear be? Not a lot of leg room. You can't have passengers there, but uh, storage space. There's approximately no room at all in the front by the looks of it. So this box here appears to be covering up storage. You have to have some level of luggage capacity on this thing, right? Otherwise, it's pretty useless if you go into the airport to and from. I mean, it's not going to be great if you can't carry suitcases, bags, and so on. So there's got to be some space here. But it appears as though Tesla's trying to mask the true shape of what lies beneath. Unless it's actually possible that this motherfucker does have a gigantic box on the back. I mean, there'd be plenty of space if he did that. Unconventional looking, but then again, we know what the Cybertruck looks like. I will close with this final thought. Were I designing this dedicated two-door, two-seat robotaxi... I would try to put something on the back that has the most possible storage room without affecting aerodynamics. And importantly, that is extremely easy to both put things in and get them out. How would that function? What would it look like? Well, we'll know in less than one month. By the way, if we have a peek inside, can you see anything? Is there a steering wheel or not? Is there a driver and or passenger or not? Or is this the world's best deep fake? We'll find out pretty soon. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment.
AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. There's plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens, now AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend, seriously, try Athletic Greens, you won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe... You might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.